Welcome to Ready Layer 2 with me, Git. Small. This is a podcast for the founders, innovators, and experimenters building the future of Web3 on Arbitrum. Welcome everybody to the Ready Layer 2 podcast. I'm your host, Git. Small, and I'm super excited to be welcoming to the show the Simple Farmer. Welcome, sir. Hey, let's up and get it small. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, man. I appreciate you reaching out and I appreciate the project that you're building. Super exciting. A lot of buzz going around the SP token and the Snako game and everything else that you got going on. So I want to dig into that here today for the audience. Thank you all. We got 27 in the live here, which is pretty good. Welcome all of you. I'm glad you could take time to, to hang out with us today. Simple Farmer, first, what I want to do is just introduce you to the audience and to me. who are just getting to know each other for the last 10 minutes or so. What's your background like? How did you get into the crypto space? What's your kind of area of expertise? Yeah, so I came in directly onto Arbitrum, actually. I was on Ethereum for just like maybe a month. And then I came, I bridged to Arbitrum and I started doing decentralized options on Dopex. And then I've been trading there for maybe about a year and a half, two years. And recently they released some new functions on their website. So I've just been trading options there. I'm the number one options trader on Strike now. It used to oh, be nice. called dopex and then i decided to bridge over to sanko and start a project of my own first started out as a meme coin and now we're adding some utility yeah right on what brought you what pulled you into sanko in the first place what caught your eye the chart man the chart was just pumping okay. and pumping and that yeah and as <laughs> an helpful. options trader i i was like there's something going on and then i started studying it a little closer gotten some of the history and then actually i guess it was two weeks ago now i was in brussels and i met the founders and the whole team and all great folks, awesome. really. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Very cool. So uh, what was the genesis of this project idea? So you launched Smoothie Phone. Talk to me about where did that idea come from and what made you like, what made you think it made sense? I was, I really wanted to first have a coin that was really memeable. So I had the idea with the old Nokia and then I was thinking how I could play into the Sanko lore. And then, of course, you know, the founders are Smoothie Williams, Mr. Smoothie Williams and Company Phone. And so it's also a play on their names and also a play on the old website Movie Phone, if you recall. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That's probably yeah. like immediately attached in my brain, but without me realizing it, it just felt familiar. That's funny. So yeah. it, interestingly enough, I actually had that phone, that Nokia phone that you're using for your meme. That was like the okay. third cell phone that I owned. <laughs> I love that thing. It was small, fit in my pocket. It was great. Obviously, it didn't have all the functionality we enjoy today, but it was a great phone. So good choice for a meme. And so you started with the token. Did you, There's a lot to this, right? Like you say, it's the thesis is simple. Your name's simple. There's a lot going on behind this, though. Did you come up with this idea for the token and then immediately design out the rest of the stuff that's coming with it? Or did you launch token just for the hell of it? And then you started adding to it. So I got onto the Sankovers and obviously the buns, Sanko Pets buns caught my eye. And I thought that was such a clever way to introduce like a farming and staking concept in game five. So I purchased a lot of buns. I purchased about 50 buns and a ton of eggs too. And my plan was to create some kind of token that shares the yield generated by the buns farming, the gold mm -hmm. yield. And then I also knew that I wanted to do something with decentralized options on chain just to give Sanko users the ability to leverage trade because there is no DeFi protocols right now on Sanko chain. So right. then once I launched Movie Phone, I saw that it picked up as a meme. I got solid name recognition. The community accepted it. And I guess a lot of people thought it was a good idea. Then I decided I'm going to integrate that, my two ideas into that. And now I'm also bridging that out into, I have the NFT collection, the Smooth Mobile Sim, which works as a gate for the mini games. And then I just did one mini game, something really basic. Snacko is like the snake mini game. And it's like a beta test of the NFT gate, just proof of mm -hmm. concept that I'm able to ship something like that. And obviously that's inspired by Sanko Pets Buns that works under the same concept. So I guess I'm trying to build symbiotically on the, on the ecosystem, which already exists within Sanko. Yeah, right on, right on. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna pull up the thesis here, and we can walk through the multiple components of it. So this is the kind of three pronged portion that you started talking about there. So why don't you get into the tokenomics a little bit with the deflationary tokenomics? How's that all working? Yeah, so there's forty two thousand six hundred ninety tokens in total. The thing is, right, 
at launch date. Actually, it was about 24 hours after launch, so it ended up costing me a little more than I expected. I airdropped 2,000 SP tokens to Mr. Smoothie Williams and 2,000 SP tokens to Company Phone just because the name is a play on their names. They've already promised that they're not going to interact with the tokens, so it's acting as a burn of the initial nice. supply. Yeah, and then the initial liquidity, which was seeded, is also burned. I launched this with Basecamp, WTS. At the time, Fugazi didn't offer and offer back any of the LP fees, and Fanco Tech was also still under development, so I did use Basecamp. What the fuck? Just because I knew that they weren't going to launch a contract with any issues. I wanted the token to be safe. What I'm doing is I get three-fifths of those trading fees, the LP fees back. I use those fees for SP buybacks, which I send to a burn address. So that makes it, and I do that daily. So that token is deflationary there. And then also with Snacko, the first mini game that I launched, it, it costs money. It costs SP to play the actual game. And yep. it's, a, it's been a massive success. So it's been less than two weeks since launch, and we've already burned over 95 SP, about 95 actually SP. It, it's about $1,500 have been burned in Smoothie Fun. Very nice. Yeah, it's a it's an addictive little game for sure. And it's one of those ones too where like you'll play 15 last tries. So I'm just going to do one more try. I want you to do it yeah. 15 times because you're like, I know I can defeat this game. I can get the egg. I can avoid the skull. And the music's awesome too, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I love Mo, the Mo Bamba. The, the Mo Bamba is pretty solid. <laughs> Thank nice. you. Thank you. Yeah, so that one of the challenges creating a skill-based game is that Crypto Brothers are smart folks and it's so easy to find a way to cheat on the game. So initially there wasn't a skull aspect mm -hmm. and people figured out how to get a high score within an hour of launch. So I needed to act, add something extremely random. The more randomness in a skill-based game, the lower the chances of cheating are. And the skull is completely random and it can actually fall directly in front of the snake's head, which results in an insta-kill. And that's yeah. the only way you can actually beat the system of having a bot that's set up to do instant motion as soon as the mm. as soon as the snake moves. So you can get instant killed within the game. Some people thought it was annoying, but really it was the only way to combat cheating. Yeah, good defense mechanism. Sure. Yeah. Sound like anything has some downside. But that's all that's kind of part of it's skills based, but it's also luck based and chance based too. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. I like that. Uh, that keeps it interesting. Just the trading we were talking about before we got started here. Okay. So yeah, the, no, the Snakeo game I've seen all over the all over Twitter. Obviously, people are having fun with it. There's daily prizes. You still you do a daily prize every day since it's launched, I think. So yes. there's something to it. You pay to, you, you're paying to play it, but you got a shot at winning something too. And obviously, bragging rights are always good. So nice little mechanics there. But uh, you're setting up. So that's like you said, that's the proof of concept for what's coming next with this apples and oranges. So tell me about that. What is that? Sounds quite a bit more complicated. Yeah, Apples and Oranges is my integration of a DeFi protocol onto Sanko Chain. So Apples and Oranges is going to be powered by something called a CLAM. It's a concentrated liquidity automated market maker. It's pretty much a smart contract that reserves liquidity that users supply and allows other users to options trade using that liquidity. So it becomes a fully decentralized options game in a way. The thing is, the actual game is being launched not on the SP token, but on the DMT USDC pool, just because that's the pool with the most liquidity on Sango okay. Chain. So you can see here, this is the front end. It's not fully complete. I was still adding smart contracts. You got to add the live chart to it. But you can see the basic setup. But pretty much on the top of the say PNL is presented kind of like a game score, like a high score. This is the ability to reserve liquidity for one hour. Six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, or a week. This little graphic, these are actually two, some of the peps that Strike draws up. And this PFP that's behind the stand, that's TZ Talk Chad. He's the, uh, he's the founder of Strike. He's a good friend of okay. mine. And we're, I'm actually collabing with Strike to build this. Oh, very cool. So, yeah. And then you'll, you'll be able to reserve liquidity or provide liquidity. And this is a short video. Let's run it back one more no, time. That's all good. Yeah, and this is mobile view. So obviously it's not completely finished. Let's call this a rough draft. Sure. Uh, I'm hope I'm hoping to have this complete within two weeks. Okay. That's yeah. that's quick turn on all these launches that you're doing here, because right? Because it hasn't been long since how long has it been since the idea first popped in your head about the SP token in the first place? 
It's existed for one month today. One month. So one month. So one month in, you've got the token launched. You've got a good a good meme narrative going. You've got Twitter go, account going. Sample game. People talking about people having good times. And you're maybe a couple of weeks away from the next thing. So that's awesome. First of all, the that just rapid shipping rather than talking about what you're going to do and then not doing anything or at least not showing anything for months like happens sometimes. Yeah. So kudos to you for that. Just a couple of weeks to produce anything and put it out and have it work is impressive. No, this is awesome. And so basically the game here is providing liquidity, you said, through the DMT USD pool and not the SP token out of the gates. But is that something that you see changing going forward? Perhaps. Yeah. The thing is, this okay. is going to be a revenue source for SP. And we're going to take sure. this. Sure. Okay this protocol revenue, we're going to use it for SP buybacks. And that's going to be part of the staking yield, which SP generates for users. Got it. The single-sided staking is the other component of this that you mentioned, but we didn't really get into much. So what is the, like, wh when is that coming and how's that all going to work? Yeah. So I'm looking at dropping single-sided staking in the middle of August. So about, a, let's say a less than a month from today. And the thing is, I would drop it earlier. It's not a difficult front end and smart contract to create. It's just staking, actual staking on a real utility token will require some kind of yield. Right now, there's going to be three main components of the single side of staking. You're going to get SP token, gold, and silver. So the source of the SP are, is the protocol fees generated by the option trading D app. The gold is going to come from buns actually farming. I have the 50 buns actively farming. I do that every day. And the third thing is silver. Yeah. And with silver, that's a token I launched about a week ago, maybe 10 days, something like that. Okay. And I seeded it with hundred DMT. Obviously that's, you got to figure that's not something that's going to last. A lot of people are going to receive silver and just sell it. Silver is also going to have some extra components in it. I'm also playing a Senko cart game that should be released in about 12 days, 12 to 13 days. Let's Jesus, say. dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have, happening. I have a lot of uh, good devs working with me and I pay well. Very nice. I make sure they work fast. Okay, good, good. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so in the single card game, you're actually going to be able to use that silver to boost your card, to mod it, soup it up and stuff like that. And then both in player to player mode and single player mode, if you win the races, you'll be able to win extra silver. So in that way, you'll be able to compound the amount of silver that you have. Uh, okay. the, the other component of silver, which isn't on the thesis, is actually going to be in regards to uh, a vault that I'm going to create. Let's call it silver finance at this time. That vault is pretty much going to be just an easier way for people to deposit liquidity into the options trading D app because it's automatically going to place your liquidity within 5% of the market price and rebalance it daily or weekly. With that, that'll generate a small fee, maybe like 1%. And that'll be used for silver buybacks. So that way, silver will still maintain value. SP maintains value. I'm trying to create a self-sufficient ecosystem, not something that constantly needs to be, have funds pumped into it, but something that is funded and upheld by the community. So pretty much as the community interacts with the whole ecosystem, all of the tokens should increase in value. Got it. Got it. So yeah, there's a lot going on there. And that's a super complex thing to try to build a self-sustaining ecosystem is your is your grasp of tokenomics and the things you're putting into play here is that just from your experience in crypto or is there something else in your background that you know that the tools that you're leaning on to know how to do all that i actually i was actually it's actually funny i was an agriculture major back in back when i was in auburn That's university doing all the farming that makes a lot of <laughs> sense yeah and <laughs> i i know a lot about building something that and, and seeding something that generates additional yield later. So I'm a really big fan of compounding and I'm a really big fan okay. of compounding that lasts. Got it. So you're saying like that, the thinking from that agricultural studies and that business model is impacting the way that you're designing this DeFi platform on the Sanko L3 crypto chain. That's, that's a really cool connection. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Maybe it's a bit of a reach. But if you think about it, you have a piece of land, you need a certain amount of seeds, a certain amount of fertilizer, and you need to farm in a way that land can keep producing you enough mm -hmm. income that you can live off that. So I definitely don't want this to be a short-term token. We see a lot of 
new tokens being launched on Senko every day, a lot of pump and dumps. And they're meme coins, that's fine. A lot of people are yeah. into that. But I prefer my meme coins to have utility. And that's maybe not a super popular opinion, but it's for me, it's like owning an antique car. If you have an antique car, you might as well make it run well as well. That's awesome. No, I I love that, like bringing in things from other disciplines, especially when they're very unobvious connections. And I, that's why I jumped at that is I actually love the fact that you're pulling and thinking from agriculture into your design of the system. I think that's, that's fascinating. And I think that is a really powerful way to make things grow is to bring in thinking from the outside. So I think that's really cool. So what else are we, what else is in here that we haven't touched on yet? Just this main thesis point. Is there anything else that we haven't touched on before I, I move on from it? Yeah. So I guess I would talk about maybe just the buns farming. People see here that it's going to take six seed cycles to get to the point where a good amount of gold is coming out that's going to generate mm -hmm. a yield, yield for SP stakers. But the thing is, in the meantime, stakers will still be getting a lot of silver and they should be getting a good amount of SP from the options D app. And another thing to consider is that I'm, it's not going to take six full seed cycles to get to this point. The thing is, I'm not waiting five days and then selling the fruit and buying more seeds. If you're familiar with the Senko Pets game, it takes some time for the tree to go to fruit, yep. go to seed. So what I'm doing is I'm actively selling fruit to buy seeds. So I'm really expediting this process as much as I can. So yep. should be. Yeah, if you're in time. there pulling them every day and then you're selling them, you're, yeah, you don't have to don't have to wait anywhere near the full cycle. And then yeah, I could see where it ramps up too. I have a, I'm only farming one, but I could see that dynamic playing out in the micro my little microcosm already. So that makes good sense. And I think I just think that's important to think about here too is that the SP pitched as a meme coin, it, it's, I guess you could say it's a meme coin with utility. It does just seems like a utility token to me with a meme, if you will, attached to it. it there's, there's a lot going on here and this could be something that lasts a very long time and ends up producing a bunch for people. So I think this is something definitely worth, if you're hearing this for the first time, I just picked this up for the first time this week and um, I'm really impressed with how thorough the thinking is already just a few weeks into a project. So I recommend you all grabbing this off of Twitter, off of the Smoothie phone. You can grab the links there on the website and get to all of this. But I recommend reading through this in a little bit more detail. This is, there's a lot going on here. So, so thanks for the breakdown on that. Let's just talk about your experience now in doing this over the last couple of weeks. What's been like, what's been like the biggest surprise for you going, getting into this and the reaction and getting people uptake? Has there been anything that's really surprised you about the process? I guess it's a bit, it's surprising in a good way how quickly I was accepted by the Sanko community. I'm not, definitely not a insider or anything with Sanko. Being in Brussels was my first time meeting the team and I, I thought everybody was really nice and really open and they were glad that I was building on chain because my goal mm -hmm. is really to improve Senko chain. The more Senko chain improves, the more SP improves. So I definitely yeah. want them to work in a symbiotic relationship. Like I said earlier, I guess I'm, I haven't been surprised by too much. Actually, <laughs> I've, had a pretty, I've had a pretty adventurous life and I'm just trying to set out a plan, man, putting, put in the daily work, make everything a little bit better every day. And I believe that leads to good long-term results. Got it. Got it. So. You mentioned you have some, you have devs working for you. Are, do you do dev yourself as well, or are you outsourcing all of that? I do a little bit of UI design, and then I okay. also audit the smart contracts just to make sure they're safe and everything. Sure. But it is outsourced, not just to complete outsiders. Like I said, I have the strike team helping me out with the options stuff. And then right. I'm at, it's actually a collab. It's definitely a collab with strike, and I'll announce that later. Other than that, no. The devs I got are really smart folks, let's just say. And yeah. They're committed to getting things done on schedule. I make sure they do things right. I do push them to make sure they're done on time, but it's something that's always going to evolve. I'm always going to be looking to improve the protocol, improve the mini games. I'm open to constructive criticism and feedback. And uh, yeah, okay. I, I believe in that kind of daily building process. Yeah, no, absolutely. A little bit each day rather than the big bang stuff. It's proven itself out and how often you're able to ship here. So. One of the things that I do with this show that I, that I think is the most important part of it, honestly, is helping other people who want to go do this type of work. And 
what type of, and with that in mind, what type of advice would you give to somebody who is looking to go out and hire some devs? Now you have the opportunity, or you have, the, you're in the good fortune of knowing a team that you trust and that you know is good and knows the space. Have you ever had to go out and find a dev without those connections? And if so, do you have any advice there? And if not, I'll move on to the next question. <laughs> Cause that's guess, a tricky I, thing. Like n trusting a dev is a tricky thing. Oh, for sure. My advice is due diligence. My advice is vetting, mm -hmm. screening, talking to people, maybe if you can in person, at least over camera, also looking at their portfolio, seeing other work they've done. You want to make sure and audit all your smart contracts and have a second pair of eyes, look over them again, because people are investing their money in these things. And you definitely yep. don't want to build something that's acceptable to any type of hack or anything like that. One of the things I've done, I'm just curious your opinion on this, because it's just, I just tried it and it seemed to give me some info is taking contracts that I was, I don't know, suspicious of, but doing my due diligence as a user or a buyer and just jamming them into chat GPT and asking it to do an audit for me. I've gotten some decent hmm. information out of that. I'm curious if you've tried that at all, or if you have an opinion on how useful an activity that would be for someone. I have never personally done that, but I think that AI as a whole system is like a tractor coming to a farm mm -hmm. that was previously using horses and stuff. So it's right. definitely a valuable tool in building, not just with smart contracts, as well as with websites, UIs and stuff like that. AI yeah. can give you some good ideas. I definitely, I fully embrace it. Okay. I was just curious. It popped out. So where I had like, where I had success with it, or at least where I had output from it, that made me think this is useful is taking the contracts of known rugged tokens and throwing them in there. And it basically pointed out six or eight or 12 flaws in each of them pretty much instantly that were red flags. And they were hmm. different from the things that I was seeing on the bird eye or, or one of those types of tools. Just an aside for the listener, if you want to check that out, I've had some success with it. So the next question I have for you along the lines of devs and helping out someone else who wants to do this is you already mentioned a few things about how you keep some pressure on them. You, you push it for dates. Like what's your best advice in terms of managing devs that are working for you? I would definitely preach patience. A good team building environment is important. Constant communication and feedback. You know, just also being open to criticism. A lot of times I think people get carried away with their ideas. And especially if you look at the UI for, for the options, the app here, the dev himself actually had a lot of input in that. And he said, Hey, let me try to build something. Let me show you what I think would look good. And so I was open to that. And then when he showed me the finished product, I was like, okay, I think this is really sharp. I think it's really clean. So I think. Not letting, leaving your ego to the side a little bit helps you be a good leader. And the ability to have empathy and engage with people in a positive manner is a sign of a good leader as well. Yeah, right on. Okay, very good. So what's, what do you think are your biggest hurdles coming up here in terms of what you're trying to accomplish? Rolling out the, you got a couple of games coming, obviously this DeFi options platform-ish game. What are the things ahead of you that I think are your biggest challenges? I think the biggest challenge will be the same challenge that faces other decentralized options platforms, which are on L2s, Arbitrum. It's onboarding liquidity, especially during a bull market or a bear market. One of the ways you can combat that is with strategy vaults. If you create a bullish or bearish strategy vault, or most vaults are straddle vaults. So they just put the liquidity within 5% of the market price. And that leads to really big premiums, which usually cancel out anything, any losses that come as the result of impermanent loss. So I think that'll be my main challenge. The thing is, I do have some liquidity ready of my own to seed mm -hmm. into the app. Uh, and then the next thing, the point of the point of the mini game is really to teach people how to trade options because it tends to be a foreign concept to a lot of people. And there's a, it's not complete. So you weren't able to see the whole thing in the rough draft there, but it's going to be a fully guided dialogue. So if you input, for example, the dialogue will ask you, do you think the price of DMT will go up or down? And say you say up, then the dialogue will ask you, okay, to what price do you think DMT will go in the next week? And mm -hmm. say you selected one week for your expiry time of your options. You say 120, then it's going to direct you to buy that liquidity up to $120 and maybe provide you an estimate for your potential profits. No, that's so, really cool. Yeah, it's really going to explain options trading to people in layman's terms. And the yeah. game is called Apple, Apples and Oranges because then I'm also going to explain that full 
dynamic in terms of apples, in terms of if you were coming up to an apple stand and making a deal with the owner of the apple stand to make an options deal yeah. for his apples. Yeah, That's so good. That's so good. So why do you want to teach people to do options? Personally, obviously, I think it's a great way to generate protocol revenue. I think it's a great way to do leverage trading. I trade options almost every day. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I prefer them to futures just because your losses are capped. If I pay $100 for an option, the most I can lose is $100. So, and the thing is with leverage trading, leverage trading is already such a, such a gamble at times. It's a risky concept. Yep. And I feel like a lot of people already don't, don't know what they're doing and they get caught off guard. So I think it's the best option to bring, it's the best way to bring these leverage trading in a decentralized manner on chain. And so many people are still using Bybit, you know, Deribit, stuff like that, centralized options, exchange exchanges. And if enough people understood how options worked, I think you'd have more than enough liquidity providers and there would be no need for centralized exchanges. One of the main things Vitalik highlighted at the Brussels conference mm. is that well, less, govern less governance is what's needed. More decentralization. That's the point of these tokens. That's the point of these currencies. Gotcha. So is all of this your way of contributing to that kind of ideal future, if you will? Is that, is that why you're doing the work that you're doing or, you know, what's really driving you? I guess I want to see what my ceiling is. I want to see what happens when I put maximum effort into building something. And I want to see if I'm able to create something sustainable, smart, and that grows over time by itself mm -hmm. with just minor adjustments. Gotcha. No, that's awesome. That's a good goal. And I'm asking all of this because there's so much going into this. There's so many different components of it. It always makes me curious. What is the, what's the goal or what's the, what's the end point that you're trying to get to that's creating all of these ideas and these other things. And that's certainly a good enough one on its own to generate lots of creative stuff going forward. So this is really good stuff, man. There's honestly a lot more than I expected to find here. <laughs> obviously it's a meme token and it's, there's a card and a mini game to it. I was like, there's obviously some stuff here, but this, there's so much more here than I expected to find. I'm super impressed. So going forward here, how can the people watching here contribute to this project or what do you, what would you like people to do, test, try, ask, whatever, what would you ask of the audience? That's a really good question. I would say something that somebody can do and every day, anytime is really build, make a meme and I think memes are such, such a great concept for onboarding new people onto Seiko mm -hmm. or any chain. That's the biggest power of a meme, meme coin is their onboarding utility. But also I feel like when an individual is in creation, you know, when you're creating things or drawing things or doing some, it's a form of art really. And I feel like that expands your horizons and lets your brain work in a really positive way. So I embrace anybody who creates movie phone memes, I often tip to give people some money if they make a really good smoothie phone meme. Nice. In terms of what they can do for the project, man, I'm very open. Anybody who wants to message me, DM me, you can find me on Twitter, OX Simple Farmer. And uh, yeah, I'm always glad to talk and listen to feedback. I'm not hiring anybody right now per se, but in the future, as this grows, the team will likely grow as well. Yeah, right on. No, this is, this is certainly a project that the, the Sonic community has already gotten behind and I think will continue to. So I think you'll see that support. And it's certainly, I'm a huge fan now. So you got my support. I'll be playing my snake -o and I will be single side staking and all that good stuff. As you come up, I will definitely continue to experiment. I'm just wondering if there's anything else here that I have not gotten into yet. Anything else you want to talk about, man? Pulling up your website right now. Yeah, I guess people, you were asking earlier what the goal is. The goal is to be the number one token on Sanko chain, besides DMT, obviously DMT is always going to be the number one, but be the number one community built token on Sanko chain. That's absolutely the goal of Slurvy Fund. And until that target is reached, I definitely will stop working. Yeah. And that's what's behind that target. Is that just that, is that the, you want to push yourself to see what you can accomplish. And if you can take that there, that means you've gotten pretty far or like, why do you want to be, it's a kind of a dumb question, but not, why do you want to be the number one? token on Sanko. 
because I, in a way, I feel like it is, it's something that I owe to the holders to give the best possible, to do the best possible work that I can do to push this thing to the highest limits. People are investing their money. People have bills made. People have kids. I have, I have a baby now too. So I understand that it's a big risk investing in these things. And I want to make sure that anybody who does invest money can at least go to bed at night and know, hey, I know somebody's working really hard to make sure this thing does well. Right on, man. I can appreciate that. I get behind that. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's a good goal just to help people out. I love that you're trying to help people learn, giving people the opportunity to, to expand their tool set with the options, make, potentially make good investment and make some money, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I think there's a lot going on here that's good for the ecosystem and that's just good in general. I love the idea of anything that can push us more towards that kind of idyllic decentralized future, if you will. That's really what, what like why I'm here is from from a technology standpoint looking forward like we live in a world where there is trust is constantly going away and where we're more interconnected so if you're more interconnected and less trustful you need tools that help you to be able to safely interact with one another i think that's like that decentralized nature of it that trustless nature of it permissionless nature of it i think is what's really exciting about all of these tools and i think it's awesome that we get to experiment with them by playing snake games, right? Like it's such a, it's a, such a simple thing, but it's working out a really important concepts and doing it in a fun way. I and mean, that's why in general, why I like all of the web three gaming stuff is where I've been really gravitating to is because exactly that it's, it's the funnest way to work out all of these problems. But this, the solutions that we're building now are going to address very serious stuff and probably the not too distant future, much beyond what they did for games in even for DeFi protocols and things like that we're experimenting with. Very cool stuff. Love the work you're doing. So happy that we met. Like I said, you got a fan in me. If you ever need anything, just holler. I'm here for you. But yeah, unless anybody, I don't think we got any takers on terms of jumping on the stream. That's all good. But I thank you for coming out, man. This has been awesome. Yeah, for sure, man. Thank you so much for having me on. And just from what you just said earlier, I think Web3 Gaming is a unique opportunity to educate people. You don't want to tell people that are learning when they are learning. The thing is with Sanko Pets, it's, it's a little micro economy. You're buying yep. seeds, planting them, yielding fruit, selling that fruit. So I think it's it, Sanko and gaming, Web3 Gaming have massive potential in a learning environment. It reminds me of Oregon Trail, for example. I don't know if you played Oregon Trail. We had that in, in our computers in my elementary school. I never played that one for some reason, but I played games like it. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, very cool. So once again, we got websites up here that is smoothiephone.com is the website. It's smoothiephone.com. It's snakeo.wtf, yeah. which we didn't play any snakeo. We can skip that. You guys don't want to see me crash into walls and give away all my SP, but super fun game. And if you haven't checked that out, I highly recommend you do. And then where can people find you online? It's just at zero X simple farmer on Twitter. Yes, that's correct. And it's actually O X, like the letter O, Ox. O X, got farm. it. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Awesome. Thanks again, man. I think we can wrap here. Thank you to everybody that showed up. We got to 46. That's definitely my highest number. You brought the viewers with you, Mr. Farmer. Good work. No, I think it was you, Get Small. I think you get, that intro was special. Thank you for listening to Ready Layer 2. If you're an Arbitrum builder with a story to share, then hit me up on Twitter at GitSmall, G-I-T-S-M-O-L. Learn more at GitSmall.com.